Hello, this is Pastor Corbett of Salt Makers Church. Listen, I want to tell you about a little mini book that I wrote entitled Your New Life in Christ. This book is designed to build a solid foundation in your Christian walk. I cover three topics in this book, the fall of man, the new birth, and the baptism with the Holy Spirit. If you can get a good understanding of those three topics, you will have a solid foundation for your Christian life. So if you're a new believer, if you're thinking about becoming a believer, or if you are a preacher, a pastor, an evangelist, and you win people to the Lord and you wanna put a little book in their hand so that they'll have something to go home, home and start reading alongside with the Word of God, this is the book for you, Your New Life in Christ. And you know what? It fits right in your shirt pocket Ladies, or it fits right in your pocketbook. It is a wonderful little mini book to have. Again, Your New Life in Christ. Now, to get a copy of this book, all you have to do is go to our website at saltmakers.org or saltmakerschurch.org, and you can order this little book from our website. Doesn't cost very much at all. It's $1.99. We're not trying to make money on the book. We just want to be a blessing to the body of Christ. Again, Your New Life in Christ, I cover three things, the fall of man, the new birth, and the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Just go to our website, saltmakers.org or saltmakerschurch.org. I would love to put this book in your hand. Again, if you're a pastor or an evangelist, someone who's out winning souls, and you need many copies of this book, then just let us know. Shoot us an email, call us and we will give you an, uh, a discounted price so that you can order these in bulk. We'd like to be your supplier for this type of book. I think, again, it would really aid you. When I wrote this book, in fact, I had you in mind because I too am a soul winner and I'm out all the time winning souls and telling people about the Lord. And I, I all the, didn't have anything to put in the hands of the folks that I led to the Lord. So that was the reason why I wrote the book. So it's really designed for that, for that purpose. So again, go to our website, saltmakers.org or saltmakerschurch.org. Again, this is Pastor Corbett. God bless you. Hello, hello, hello. This is Pastor Corbett of Salt Makers Church. And we're going through so much um, nowadays that I just had to come forward and share some things that God has shared with me that I think will be a blessing to you. What I want to talk about for a few minutes is what to do with the bad things that we're seeing. We're seeing bad things all over the country, all over the world, in fact. And the Lord spoke to me and said, um, here are the things that my people should be doing as they see these bad things, okay? So I want to share them with you. Uh, there are five of them, and then there are five reasons why we need to be doing what the Lord told us. All right. So let's get started. First thing the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18, is we should not be looking at the bad things. Um, scripture says, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Verse 17 and 18 says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, <clears throat> worketh for us a far more exceeding and internal weight of glory, while we look not at things which are seen. There it is. Paul says we should not be looking at the things which are seen, but we should be looking at the things which are not seen, eternal things, things that are in the spirit world. Those are the things that we need to be seeing. If you would, let me put my little timer on here because I need to time this. I'm trying to keep this under 20 minutes. But again, Paul says, while we look not at things which are seen, but at things which are not seen. So the first thing is you don't need to be looking as believers. We don't need to be looking at the bad things. OK, we don't need to be looking at it. We don't. We, what we need to be doing is looking at the word of God. All right. Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs 4, verse 18, 
Mm, sorry. Proverbs 4, verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear into my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. So what we need to be attending to is the word of God, not all the bad news that we see on, on television. The, the news channels, that's their business model. Their business model is to show the bad, the worse, the ugly. They do that because I guess that's what calls, calls people to come and, and view their channels. So they are constantly telling us about all the bad things that are going on with COVID-19 at the moment. We as believers, we don't need to be looking at them. We need to be attending to the word of God because the word of God is medicine to our flesh. Okay. So first, don't look at them. Put the word on. Them. Listen to the word of God. Put on a, put on a good Bible teaching uh, podcast or Bible teaching uh, TV station. Not all that stuff that's coming from CNN and MSNBC and, and Fox News and, and all the other channels because they're just going to inundate you with all the bad things, all the people that are dying from COVID-19. Um, they're not going to show you the people who are recovering. There are more, much, much more, many more people recovering from COVID-19 than there are that are dying from it. But, the, but, the, but they're not going to show you that. The enemy wants to just keep feeding you all the bad news. You got to disconnect. Talk about social distancing. We need to distance ourselves from all the bad news. Okay. So first of all, don't look at it. Second of all, don't consider it. Don't consider it. Romans chapter four. And we are going to be going from verse to verse here. Romans chapter four tells us about Father Abraham. The, the, the Lord had made a promise to Abraham that he would be the father of many nations, but that promise had not been fulfilled by the time Abraham had become about 100 years old and his wife um, in the 90s. Okay, she was an old woman. He was an old man. And there was no way the two of them could be, a, be parents of, of, uh, of all these people. They couldn't even, in fact, they couldn't even have one child uh, given the state of their body. But Abraham, the scripture tells us, uh, was not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. So he didn't consider the deadness of his body. His body was not able to make a child. He was 100 years old. We know that. We know a 100-year-old man cannot uh, make a child. And we know a woman who is in her 90s cannot make children, okay? They can't conceive children. But Abraham didn't consider that. He didn't obsess on that. That was not important to him. The state of his body was not important. What was important to Abraham was what God said. He was only considering the word of God. So I'm telling you to do the same thing. The Holy Spirit is, is telling all of us to do this to not consider all the bad news, okay? Don't obsess on it. Yes, of course, you know, staying update about what's going on with this virus is completely understandable, but just putting the TV on one of those channels and just all the time and then giving it the kind of attention and the preeminence that you should the word of God, that's gonna do nothing but cause you to, to live in fear. OK, um, so you need to not consider you need to do what Father Abraham did. He considered not his own body. That was not important to him. So all the bad news that shouldn't be important to us. What should be important and preeminent to us is what God says in his word. OK, for example, what does he say? Psalm 91, uh, he says uh, in the 91st Psalms, he says that. We'll see a thousand that fall at our right hand, 10,000 at our left hand, but it won't come near us. What else does it say? It says, uh, no plague shall come near our dwelling place. It says, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about us. It says, the angel of the Lord taketh, taketh up us in 
his hand lest we dash our foot against the stone. That we don't have to fear the terror by day and, and, and the error by night and the plague and all of that because God has us. He has us covered. So instead of considering all the bad news, consider what the word of God says. So number one, don't look at all that stuff. Cut the TV off. Don't look at it. Number two, don't consider it. That means do not make it just preeminent. Okay, don't put it above the word of God. The bad news you put up here, the word of God you put here. That's not what you need to be doing. You need to do the opposite. Put the word of God up here and put the bad news down here. Consider the word, attend to the, the word of God as we read in Proverbs chapter four. Third thing is don't walk by them. Don't walk by the bad news. Don't let the bad news determine your behavior and your conduct. All right. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seven says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. You got faith on one side. You got sight on the other side. You got to choose what are you going to conduct your life by? Are you going to conduct your life by what you see? Or are you going to conduct your life by what you believe, by what the word of God says? That's a choice that every believer has to make. And from the level of fear that I see even among Christians, it seems as though Christians, many of them have decided that they're going to be more influenced by what they see, all the bad stuff, rather than what God says. You see, you got to make that decision, a quality decision. I'm going to stand on the word of God. God is faithful. He cannot lie. It is impossible for him to lie. And so I'm going to stand on the word of God. So you got to make a decision that you're not going to look at this stuff. You're not going to consider this stuff. You're not going to walk by it. And fourth of all, you're not going to talk about it. OK, why not? Because life is and death are in the power of the tongue. What you say with your mouth releases what will happen in your life. The Lord told me on one occasion, he said, son, stay full of my word so that your heart will be full of faith and your words will then be full of power. Let me say it again. He, he said to me, son, stay full of my word so that your heart will be full of faith so that your words will be full of power. Your words are containers. They carry the power of God or they carry the power of the devil. If you speak the word of God, you're releasing God's power. If you speak the words of Satan and all the stuff that you're seeing in the news, you're releasing the power of the devil. And therefore you're enabling the devil and demons to, to attack your life and to bring about the very things that you're saying. So when someone calls you and want to talk to you about how bad this is and how many people are dying and, and, and all of that, don't engage in that conversation. Switch that conversation back to the word of God. You know what you need to do? Get you some scriptures, get you some scriptures to stand on and to confess. All right. And then start confessing those scriptures all the time. Start with Psalm 91. That's a good place to start. Or the 23rd Psalm. Try that. That's a good one. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. That, th those, are good, those are good scriptures that you can just be standing on, that you can be talking about rather than talking about COVID-19 all the time. I don't know about you, but I am getting tired of hearing all this stuff about COVID-19, COVID-19, coronavirus, coronavirus, like our God is just a little bit of God. No, our God is great. He's greater than COVID-19. The name of Jesus, the Bible tells us, is above every name. There is no name like the name of Jesus. Every knee will bow to that name. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord, including COVID-19. 
or coronavirus or any other fancy name you want to give this virus or any other virus. Praise God. Don't talk about it. And fifth of all, don't worry about it. Okay? Don't worry about it. Don't stress out and panic about COVID-19. Now, listen, make sure you do what the experts are telling you to do. I am not telling you not to do these things, okay? Wear your mask, shelter in, social distancing. Do all of that, all right? Do every bit of that. You, 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 you still can be in faith and following the instructions of the experts, okay? So I'm not counseling you not to follow the instructions of the experts. But I'm saying that what you need to do is start focusing on the spirit world and start focusing a lot less on the natural world, on what you're seeing with your eyes, okay? Your eyes will just filter in or bring in a lot of fear-based information. And that's the last thing that you, me, and any other believes right now, we a uh, believer needs right now is we are trying to um, believe God's word and walk in faith. The last thing we need is to be just feeding our minds and our hearts a bunch of fear based information, which is what is coming from the television. All right. So to avoid that, I've given you five things. Number one, don't look at them. Number two, don't consider them. Number three, don't walk by them. Number four, don't talk about them. And number five, don't worry about them. All that's in the word of God. Okay. All that's in the word. All right. Now, why should you handle the, these bad things the way that I just said? Well, first of all, the word says so. Okay. The word should be fine authority. So that's, that, that's not on my list, but let me just start there. We should handle things the way God tells us to handle things because he knows how they should be handled. But here's some other reasons from the scriptures. We shouldn't look at them, consider them, walk by them, talk about them, or worry about them, because they don't compare to all the wonderful things that God has prepared for us according to 1 Corinthians 2.9. The Bible says, I have not seen, ear hasn't heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of man what God has prepared for those who love him. That's what you need to focus on. Amen. You need to focus on that, not all this bad stuff. The bad things don't compare to what God has prepared, the party that he has prepared for you and I as believers. Second of all, there's an angelic host that outnumbers all the bad stuff. We got all kinds of angels who are fighting for us, who are in the spirit world warring for us. OK, we need to know how to release them so that they can get out there and, and, and get in the minds of the scientists, giving them cures for this thing or making sure no person who has this disease come in our immediate circle. See, angels can direct them other places or direct us in another direction. So we have we have artillery. We have help. God did not leave us without help. There is an angelic host that is fighting for us. I apologize. I'm keeping up with my time so I don't go over it. Uh, third of all, all the bad things that we're dealing with right now, they are working for us a great weight of glory. Amen. That's what the scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, that um, all the stuff that we're seeing, that we're seeing the bad things, they are working for us. A greater good. Not that God sent this stuff. God didn't send it. But God is able to take what the devil meant for evil and turn it for our good. And so we are actually growing through this season. OK, as we are shut in, as we are sheltered in, I call it shut in because that's what we used to call it in the old Pentecostal church that I used to be a part of as a child. We was we were shut in and pray for two or three days, four or five days at the time. And that's kind of the way I've seen this. This has just been a time to shut in, to seek God, to get in the word. To, 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 I heard somebody use the word reset. I heard somebody else say it's a recess, you know, where we can, can, can just slow down a minute, get back in tone with God. Amen. And so in that way, 
this bad thing has still become good for us. And that reminds me of what the scripture says anyway. We as believers, we never lose. We never lose. We always win. God always calls us to triumph. Even the precious brothers and sisters who have gone on, who have gone on to be with the Lord because of COVID-19, they still won because they're in the presence of the Lord right now. The devil can't cause us to lose. There's no losing in Christ. There's no losing in Jesus. Even death doesn't defeat us. No, 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 no. Even death doesn't defeat us. We win even in death because we go and be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. What else? Another reason why you shouldn't talk about it, consider it, walk by it, look at it, worry about it is because they're temporary. This is going to pass. We're going to get through this. OK, we're going to get through this. Just hang in there. God has given scientists uh, cures for this, vaccines for this, and and he's healing a whole lot of other people. And he's already put in us an immune system that is defeating it in 80 percent of the uh, of the infections. So there's nothing to fear. We're in good shape. We're in good shape. Praise God. This is temporary. We will get through this. And last of all, again, you shouldn't look at it, consider it, walk by this bad news, all these bad things, talk about them, worry about them for the last reason, which is we have authority over it. We, the body of Christ, we have authority over everything on the earth because we have authority in the spirit world. Because we have authority over every demon, over Satan himself, over every principality, over every power, we have authority over them. And it's those demons and principalities and powers that are running things in the background. Well, the body of Christ needs to stand up and say, you, you, we're going to stop you devil from running stuff and having your way and running ramshod on the earth. Because Jesus said, whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That means whatever we say can happen, Jesus says it'll happen. He'll let it happen. If we let it happen, he'll let it happen. If we say, no, that can't happen, that can't continue, that can't go on, then Jesus backs us up, backs us up from heaven. He's given us authority. And then he told us in Luke 10, 19, that he's given us power over all the works of the enemy. He's given us authority over all the enemy's power so that we can tread upon scorpions and serpents and nothing by any means shall hurt us. So we have authority here. Many of us don't realize we have that authority. Consequently, many of us not, are not using that authority but we have that authority nonetheless because the Lord gave it to us. Praise God. So there it is. I wanted to share that with you in a quick 20, 25 minute video. I want you to meditate on these scriptures. Don't look at all the bad stuff. Turn the TV off. Get in the word of God. Attend to the word of God. That's what the Bible says do. Don't consider them. Be like Father Abraham who didn't consider that he was up in age. He just stayed focused on the word of God. Don't walk by this stuff, walk by faith in the word of God. Don't talk about it, don't worry about it. Why? Because God has prepared some awesome things for us. The, the angelic host outnumbers all the stuff that we're seeing that's occurring. Um, this bad stuff is, uh, God is using it to work out a, a, a wonderful glory in our lives and. And, and causing us to mature and to grow in the things of God. Okay, it just went off. Praise God. Okay, so my time is up. Last of all, these things are temporary and they are subject to our authority. So you remember that child of God, the next time the spirit of fear comes your way, you resist it on the authority of, the, of these scriptures. Okay, you resist it. You have the victory and you have authority in Jesus' name. God bless you. Hello, this is Pastor Corbett of Saltmakers Church. 
Listen, I want to tell you about a little mini book that I wrote entitled Your New Life in Christ. This book is designed to build a solid foundation in your Christian walk. I cover three topics in this book, the fall of man, the new birth, and the baptism with the Holy Spirit. If you can get a good understanding of those three topics, you will have a solid foundation for your Christian life. So if you're a new believer, if you're thinking about becoming a believer, or if you are a preacher, a pastor, an evangelist, and you win people to the Lord and you wanna put a little book in their hands so that they'll have something to go home, home and start reading alongside with the Word of God, this is the book for you, Your New Life in Christ. And you know what? It fits right in your shirt pocket, ladies, or it fits right in your pocketbook. It is a wonderful little mini book to have. Again, Your New Life in Christ. Now, to get a copy of this book, all you have to do is go to our website at saltmakers.org or saltmakerschurch.org and you can order this little book from our website. Doesn't cost very much at all, it's $1.99. We're not trying to make money on the book, we just want to be a blessing to the body of Christ. Again, Your New Life in Christ, I cover three things, the fall of man, the new birth, and the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Just go to our website, saltmakers.org or saltmakerschurch.org. I would love to put this book in your hand. Again, if you're a pastor or an evangelist, someone who's out winning souls, and you need many copies of this book, then just let us know. Shoot us an email, call us, and we will give you an, uh, a discounted price so that you can order these in bulk. We'd like to be your supplier for this type of book. I think, again, it would really aid you. When I wrote this book, in fact, I had you in mind because I too am a soul winner and I'm out all the time winning souls and telling people about the Lord. And I, I all the, didn't have anything to put in the hands of the folks that I led to the Lord. So that was the reason why I wrote the book. So it's really designed for that, for that purpose. So again, go to our website, saltmakers.org or saltmakerschurch.org. Again, this is Pastor Corbett. God bless you.